Um, I'm Namita and I'm from uh, Flipkart. And uh, today I'm here to present my work on Sneak Peek, the real-time virtual machine uh, monitor. A brief introduction about myself. I've done my BTEC from uh, National Institute of Technology, Routkela. And uh, I passed out in the year 2011. And I've been in the software industry for the past four years. And I've been working in the role of a software development engineer in test. And for the first three years of my career, I was with IBM. And for the past one year, I've been with Flipkart. A few words about the company Flipkart uh, before we go and start talking about sneak peek. I'm sure most of you here might have uh, used Flipkart at, uh, at least once. Now, uh, Flipkart has a very strong uh, technical uh, workforce spread across three offices in Bangalore. Uh, there are the workforce is spread across 100 plus teams, and they are the best and the creamy layer of technical professionals in the software industry. And both the QA and the software development engineers together are 2,000 plus in number. Flipkart is a company which stresses and puts a lot of effort in maintaining a very good, strong infrastructure. The Flipkart has 25,000 plus virtual machines in production itself, with capacity running into several pentabytes, and of course the mon money worth being in million, millions of dollars. So with, this, with a strong workforce and the best infrastructure, Flipkart tries to provide the best shopping experience to their customers. In Flipkart, we have a set of physical servers uh, or motherships or bare metal servers dedicated for the, uh, dedicatedly allocated for the testing purposes. So virtual machines are created from these physical servers and artifacts are deployed on these virtual machines and tests are run before these artifacts are de deployed to production. Now as to how efficiently these virtual machines are being used are determined by the following matrices. The average virtual machine capacity utilization. That is, we can create n number of virtual machines. Of these, how many are effectively utilized? Second, the average day since last login. How frequently are the users logging into these, uh, these created virtual machines and using them? And third, buggy man manual deployments to production per month. As I mentioned before, vir these virtual machines are meant for test purposes. There were primarily two problems uh, evolving around the creation of these virtual machines and um, you know, problems with maintaining these virtual machines. Even before we had a monitoring tool for these virtual machines, we observed that on an average only 34% of the virtual machine capacity was utilized. And on an average, only these virtual machines were being logged into and utilized only 22 days once. The second issue was with the number of buggy deployments that were going to production and the increasing number of rollbacks from production. These bugs were uh, mainly due to, uh, you know, they were mainly regression bugs introduced due to new feature changes. This was about 10 plus during major releases. And this amounts to 160 plus working hours of both the QAs and the software developers together. As a solution to these problems, we came up with a novel monitoring tool known as Sneak Peek. Sneak Peek is a, web, uh, is a UI based uh, tool which is hosted on an Apache web server. From uh, Sneak Peek, we can closely monitor the creation of virtual ma machines. That is, every time a new, new virtual machine from any of the uh, bare metal servers is created, the name of the virtual machine and the, virtual, and the physical server it belongs to along with all its details as to the memory it's got, the hard disk it's got, etc. would appear on the Sneak Peek UI. Secondly, deployments. Every time there is a uh, there is a artifact deployed on each one of each of these uh, virtual machines, the name of the artifact along with the version would appear on the Sneak Peek UI. And thirdly, and the most importantly, the utilization. Sneak Peek clearly uh, clearly shows the percentage of memory and the percentage of hard disk utilized on each one of these virtual machines created. Also, it gives the day the virtual machine was lastly logged into. So from this, we can understand how frequently the virtual machines are being used. And lastly, the list of deleted virtual machines. So every time we create virtual machines and we do not use them, they ultimately are deleted. Sneak Peek even gives us the list of all the deleted virtual machines. Now let's look closely at the back-end design of the Sneak Peek tool. 
Uh, now in this flow diagram, there are two uh, flows, one highlighted in red and the other one highlighted in green. The flow in the, first I will talk about the flow uh, that is highlighted in red. The flow highlighted in red, you can see the NAGEO server. I am sure most of you, most of you all here know that uh, NAGEO is, uh, is an open source computer software application mainly meant for alerting and monitoring purposes of applications and services. So we just pulled out one of our virtual machines and configured NAGEOs in it to monitor all our virtual machines. So our virtual, machine, virtual machines are the hosts to this NAGEO server. And NAGEOs is capable of monitoring the uh, monitoring its hosts in two ways. One is actively, the other is passively. So during active alerting, NAGEOs initiates the checks, while in passive alerting, the hosts perform the checks and they return, return the check results to the NAGEO server. In our design, we have used passive alerting. Now as to how we use passive alerting in our uh, design. We have written um, shell scripts and deploy them in each of our virtual machines. These shell scripts have some rules defined in them. So every time a rule is breached in uh, breached, um, you know, during any during the execution of these shell scripts, a status of one will be sent to the NAGEO server along with a text message. And in case the health of the machine is good and there's no rule breached in the executing shell script, a status of zero will be sent to the NAGEO server. And um, in this case, it means the health of the machine is good. So every time NAGEO receives a status of one from any one of its hosts that it is monitoring, it sends a mail out to the mail group that is configured in it. Along with the text message it receives from the host. I can take an example. Suppose we are monitoring a particular service running on one of our virtual machines. And let's assume that the service is down. Now when the service, when the particular service is down, um, uh, there is a shell, the shell script defined for this would be if a particular service is uh, down, send a status of 1 along with a text message saying that this particular service is down on this particular server. If else, if the particular service is up, it would send a status of 0 saying that the service is up and the health of the machine is good. So in this case, when the service is down, uh, the shell, shell script sends a status of 1 to the NAGEO server saying that a particular service on a particular VM is down and NAGEO sends out a, a, a alerting email to our uh, test group. We have uh, 7 to 8 shell scripts deployed on our virtual machines for monitoring, uh, for different monitoring purposes like uh, to monitor hard disk and uh, memory. That is every time the memory utilization is very high on a virtual machine, NAGEO sends out a alerting email saying that on this particular virtual machine. Uh, the memory utilization is very high. Uh, so, uh, after the virtual machine is created, how to make these shell scripts available? Okay, that's one question. The second is, I thought that when you use a NAGEO server, you have to install a NAGEO. Uh, when you install a... When you use a NAGEO server, you need to have an agent running on the virtual machine. So, mm -hmm. uh, and the first question is, uh, how are these uh, shell scripts made available in the virtual machine after you create them? Yeah, to answer your first question, uh, these shell scripts are written by us itself. We define the uh, conditions in it. If a particular service, no, no. Like uh, the question is, how do you make those shell scripts? Available? No, we can uh, manually deploy them on these uh, virtual machines. So, which means that if you have, uh, you know, thousand virtual machines, for every virtual machine that you create, you'll have to manually go and deploy the shell scripts. That is one way of doing it. Otherwise, you can have an automated deployment also from Jenkins or somewhere to deploy these uh, into the virtual machines. Okay, and the second one was, uh, um, I, I thought that NAGEO server uh, generally has agents deployed on the virtual machines. So do you use agents here? No, we use the shell scripts to do the checks and send it back. The uh, hosts are configured in the, in the NAGEO server, basically in the configuration of the NAGEO server, we have all its hosts. And the hosts are configured, they have the IP of the NAGEO server. So uh, every time uh, the shell script executes, it's, we don't have an agent. It's this shell script that sends the status to the NAGEO server. Okay. Just one more question. Excuse me, I don't know that. How frequently you execute the shell script? The shell script, it's all based on uh, how frequently you, frequently you want to execute the shell script. That would also be a configuration. In our case, we're doing it one hour once. Okay, one hour. One hour once. But that is, again, a configuration in NAGEOs. You can do it the way you want to. You can on do it five minutes once. Oh. It's on the user side, yeah. So what's the protocol used between these two uh, 
uh, for communicating the status? It is just the IP that we, uh, that we have configured and Nagios is an open source um, application that we have just installed on one of our VMs and we are using it. There is one more question there. Hi, Parul here. I got a couple of questions on this. Uh, so my first question is, are you giving a customization way of uh, like generating the alerts based on the threshold value or it is like by default sets in the shell script and we cannot edit it later? No, the shell script are written by us, right? Like uh, whoever deploys the shell script, he can define whatever condition he wants in it. Okay, those uh, shell yeah. scripts are editable by the user. Yeah, uh, shell scripts are written, completely written and executed and tested and then only put in the machine. It's just a if else block. If this particular condition is met, then send a status 1, otherwise send a status 0. So the, my purpose is to ask is like it is for the internal use only or it is exposed to the outer world also? No, it's just for the internal use for monitoring our virtual machines that we create. Monitoring the health of our virtual machines okay, that we create. Okay, so... Uh, uh, this uh, like the solution is for monitoring the services or monitoring the entire virtual machine? Uh, mo you can use it the way you want to. In our case, we are using it for monitoring the uh, health of the services running on it and the virtual machine as so, well. So, uh, I want to monitor the service, but what in case the virtual machine itself is down, so it will be giving a false status? Yeah, in that, case, in that case, it would fail. Okay. In that Thank case, you. it would fail. Thank you. Thank you. There's one more question here. Do you want to complete your presentation and yeah. then take the question? Yeah, I'll or? take the question after the presentation. Okay. Okay, that's about the first flow where we are using Nagios to generate emails. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we are trying to monitor the health, the services, and the kind of deployments on the virtual machines as well. In the second flow, the second flow is the highlighted in green over here. We have a job written in Java, and this job executes every five minutes. So uh, this job every five minutes skims through each of these virtual machines and gets all relevant data like the name of the virtual machine, the last login that happened on this virtual machine, the percentage of memory utilized on this virtual machine and the percentage of hard disk remaining or utilized on this virtual machine and it dumps all this data into a MySQL DB. Now we have a PHP file between the MySQL DB and the UI to collect data from the MySQL DB. And our UI is built with um, JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. Now, I just spoke about a Java job that uh, you know pulls data from the virtual from various virtual machines and dumps it to the MySQL DB. Now, this data can be first at the physical server level or the bare metal server level. Now, it gets a total server capacity. That is, uh, this is the capacity of all the physical servers put together. Second, the remaining capacity, that is, a, again, this is the remaining capacity on all the physical servers put together. And third is the number of virtual machines in running state. Now, I, I previously mentioned that you can create a virtual machine, and if it is not utilized, you will delete the virtual machine. So this will give the total number of virtual machines which are in running state, and it also gives the count of the total number of virtual machines that are deleted, that are in deleted state. Now at a VM virtual machine level, it gets data on the physical server the particular VM is created from, the date on which it was created, by whom it was created, the person who created the virtual machine, the team the particular virtual machine belongs to. So this virtual machines can be created and used by various test teams. This gives the name of the test team the particular which virtual machine is created for. And the state of the virtual machine running or deleted, SSHable, that is whether you are able to SSH into a virtual machine and use it or not. And then the memory, CPU and capacity of a particular virtual machine. And along with that, the percentage of memory used and the percentage of memory and the percentage of hard disk used. And lastly, the day when it was lastly logged into. So the MySQL, I mean the Java job, collects all this data by skimming in through all, into all these virtual machines every five minutes and puts it in the MySQL DB. I also spoke of uh, monitoring deployments on these virtual machines. Now, um, the job gets the name of the latest artifact installed on these virtual machines, the artifact version of the uh, virtual, of the art artifact version, the person who deployed, the name of the user who deployed this artifact, the time and the command he used to deploy this artifact, error logs. That is, any exceptions that are occurring in the uh, error logs after deployment and uh, logged in users. This gets all the co or users concurrently logged into the virtual machine, the names of all the users. 
and the state of the services whether the service is up running up and running or the, if the services are down and the environment the VM belongs to like uh, we have two environments one can be the functional test environment the QA environment or the end to end environment the end to end uh, test environment. So, a VM can be belong to any one of these environments. So, it gets that data as well and the automation te automated test results. So, every time an artifact is deployed on a particular virtual machine there are set of regression tests that, that are run on the latest uh, deployed artifact. So, this would this get it gets the number of tests passed to the number of tests failed. So, this is all the data the Java job gets from by skimming into the various virtual machines and it dumps all this data into the MySQL DB. Sometime back I spoke about the Nagio server and the different shell scripts that are executing on the uh, virtual machines. Now, again the shell scripts use the following data for determining the health of the virtual machine they have been executed on. The, uh, this would be the artifact uh, artifacts installed that is the name of the artifacts installed artifact version deployed by time command and the type of deployment. Now, uh, as in Flipkart we have we have two kinds of deployments manual deployments when a user manually makes a deployment that he compiles and uh, deploys a particular artifact manually on a virtual machine. And in Flipkart, we are integrated with the country, we have, we are integrated with the, C, we have a CI integration with Jenkins and Git. So, uh, deployment can also be done via Jenkins. That is every time there is a check-in to the master, Jenkins would clone and it would compile it would, and create an artifact and deploy it on the virtual machines. And once it does the deployment to the virtual machines, it sets, it triggers a set of automated tests that would be run on these, on the latest artifact on that particular virtual machine. So, type of mode, type of deployment would be whether this deployment was done by Jenkins or was it a manual deployment. And then it would uh, use the uh, memory usage that is as I mentioned before every time the memory usage is very high uh, there are alerts for it hard disk usage and the state service state that is whether the services on these VMs are up or down. So, Nagios basically uses the shell script use this data to determine the health of the virtual machines they are running on and they send status to the Nagio server every one hour on the health of the virtual machines. Now, this is the current front end implementation of the sneak peek tool. You can, um, you can see the first column is the last time when the job ran that is I spoke about the Java job. So, this shows the last time when the Java job went and skimming through all these virtual machines and getting their data and it gives the total capacity and the total remaining capacity it shows that even. And this is basically a, 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 you can see around 7 to 8 entries here. This table has a scroll you, we have around 130 virtual machines in uh, running state now. If you scroll down this uh, table you can see the state of all the 130 uh, VMs in running state. And there is a sort option on each of these columns. So, you can probably sort by a particular uh, I mean you can sort there is a column for created on. So, you can go and sort by created on and see the late the virtual machines uh, the newest virtual machines that have been created. And there is a search option as well. So, uh, you can go and search by a particular team name and see all the virtual machines that are there crea uh, create, created for that particular team. You can go and uh, even search by uh, you know the name of a physical server and see all the virtual machines that have been created from that physical server. And also you can see some values appearing here in red. Uh, I do not think you can read it clearly. It says machine not logged in for a month. So, I spoke about um, uh, when I was talking about the Java job, I said the Java job gets the date when the machine was lastly logged into. So, every time the job f uh, finds that a particular machine has not been logged into for more than a month, it gets highlighted here in the UI. And also, um, if a particular virtual machine has not been logged into for more than two weeks, the date uh, would also uh, you know appear in red and it, the, it would blink. The blinking can't be seen here because it is a screenshot. And then uh, the UI has two sub pages. Uh, the one on the right is the page which give highlights deployments that are happening at a virtual machine level. So, uh, there are services in red, there are some entries in red and some in maroon. So, every time a particular service on a VM is down, it shows in maroon and every time it is up, it would show in green. And uh, also, every time there is a manual deployment, the name of the user who made this manual deployment along with the time and command would appear in red. On, on the, it would get highlighted on the sneak peek UI. And the um, 
screen on the left is the list of all deleted virtual machines. Um, today we have around 50 entries uh, in this uh, particular list. That is 50 virtual machines which were created, not utilized and then deleted. If you scroll down the deleted uh, VM uh, table, you would find around 50 entries in it. Now I just pulled out some uh, columns uh, from the sneak peek UI uh, which I thought is important to be uh, discussed. The sneak peek UI has uh, more number of columns but these are, these are the ones I would like to highlight. So what is it that we mainly take away from the sneak peek UI? The first thing is sneak peek gives us an insight into the number of created virtual machines versus the number of virtual machines destroyed. Secondly, it also, uh, every, we have observed that sometimes we create virtual machines, but we are not able to log into these virtual machines and use them because these virtual machines are not created properly sometimes. So um, the um, virtual machines would appear here, but the SSHable column would show no. So when we can go and SSH and fix these uh, virtual machines and bring them back to a running state. And the vice versa also has happened when you delete a particular virtual machine and it's not deleted properly, you can still SSH into it. So we can actually go and fix all the faulty creations and uh, deletions. And also we have around 150 plus virtual machines in running state today. We won't know which particular VM is going down at what time and uh, what time and uh, you know when it's not being SSHable or not in a usable state. So from sneak peek we can easily see all those VMs which are going down and we can go and fix those VMs and bring it back to a usable state. Secondly, uh, sneak peek uh, also gives us the uh, memory and the hard, hard disk utilized. So from this we can see, all, see some virtual machines which are being underutilized. They might be used frequently but they are underutilized. So you can go and replace these underutilized uh, under virtual machines with smaller virtual machines. And on the other hand, I already spoke about the last login column. So um, from the last login column, every time you see that a particular virtual machine is not being logged into very frequently and used, you can actually go and ask the user if this virtual machine is actually needed and actually, uh, you know, supposed to be there in the system and you can delete them if not. And uh, thirdly, I spoke about the mode of deployments. So the deployed by in the uh, column here would uh, highlight every time, uh, you know, a, a manual deployment occurs on any one of the virtual machines. So uh, in Flipkart, we strongly encourage automated deployments because only in case of automated deployments in Jenkins do you have a set of regression tests running on the artifact. If you do manual deployments, these set of automation tests are never run on these artifacts. And um, finally and the most importantly, um, it has happened that sometimes after deployment of some packages on these virtual machines, we observe that the services go down for a long time. And that gets highlighted here in the sneak peek UI. And also the exception, number of exceptions in the log also increase. And along with it, number of test failures also are very high. So from, by putting all these values together, we can easily understand the quality of a particular artifact version. And uh, this would, uh, you know, this has tremendously helped us in foreseeing the effects of a particular artifact post production, deployment to production. And this has definitely helped us in redu reducing the number of buggy deployments to production. It, um, it usually doesn't happen that our users are always using the sneak peek UI and refreshing it to get all necessary data from it. So Nachos is one, one way we use to send out emails to all our users to, you know, make sure they are aware of the health of the systems. So, uh, as, uh, so as I've mentioned previously, every time there's a memory usage, when the memory usage is very high or a particular service is down, uh, you know, in a particular system, there are Nachos alerting and our users, uh, I mean, the test group, the users in the test group, because Nachos sends mail to a configured uh, email ID. In our case, it is the test group. So everyone in test group gets the mail and they know the health of the virtual machines. Usually in the, in the industry, Nagios is used for monitoring the health of virtual machines. But in this work, we have used Nagios in a very different way. We have used Nagios to monitor the kind of the mode of deployments to the, to the virtual machines. 
that is every time there is an auto, there is a non Jenkins deployment or when there is a manual deployment to a particular virtual machine, we send out mails to the test group saying that the manual deployments have happened. And this is a sample email, the subject of the mail and this is how the mail would be. It would contain the name of the user, the artifact, uh, name of the artifact and the command the user used to uh, deploy this artifact. Um, so now let us look into the impact of sneak peek. Before I speak to uh, speak about the impact it has had, I would like to highlight the whatever numbers that I am going to talk about here, whatever numbers this particular slide is showing is the are the numbers immediately before we created sneak peek and immediately after we created sneak peek. So the number of virtual machines before we created sneak peek was 171 and immediately after we got sneak peek we deleted n number of uh, around 40 plus virtual machines which we felt were not utilized correct uh, were not utilized or underutilized and now and after that we got 127 virtual machines. Sneak peek was created about 3 months back. So um, now this number is not 127, the number of virtual machines have increased as the number of we are expanding and we have more number of teams. So we have around 150 virtual machines in running state today. And the server space utilization was very high before uh, we had sneak peek, it was 73 percent and now it is just 51 percent. The VM, the virtual machine capacity utilization has come down, for, has uh, increased from 34 percent to 80 percent which is a very good improvement and then days since last login was on an average was just 22 days once and now it is just it is uh, 7 days once that is the you the people users are using the uh, virtual machines more frequently and most importantly the number of buggy deployments to production per month have reduced to an absolute zero. Now the work ahead that we have in sneak peek. Uh, when it comes to design, we have uh, data published in a tabular format uh, today. So we want to make uh, you know data more, uh, we want to present data in a better way. We want to introduce user types. We have different roles in flip cards like developers, testers and managers. So based on who is uh, using the tool, we want to just display appropriate information to them. And we want to introduce authentications and push notifications to make it easy for our users to use this tool. They do not have to scroll up and down to see which virtual machine is created. So every time there is a new virtual machine, we can have a push, push notification for it. And data visualization that is uh, you know in terms of pie charts and graphs, we want to introduce better visualization of data. And then patterns and forecasting, this is very important for a company like Flipkart which is you know rapidly uh, you know which is rapidly growing for uh, you know for us to do better cap capacity planning and foresee what is coming in the future and what capacity and infra we would require in the future. That is about it, thank you. So uh, we have uh, time for one question, I am sorry. And, uh, she had asked earlier, I'm really sorry we're short of time, so I'll give the mic to her. Uh, hi, uh, so as you said, you have uh, 25,000 virtual machines in your organization. Yeah. So which vendor you are using? You are using VMware or Azure or, uh, or a combination of both? Um, I think Srivali can uh, probably answer that question. They, they support the Flipkart data centers. We have NetMagic in Bombay and uh, in Chennai. We have two data centers. We outsource. Yeah. I mean, you'll be installing all the scripts in all the virtual machines. Yeah. How do you do that? Do you use any configuration management tool uh, to push the scripts to individual machines? Uh, we have a configuration service that is just to pick up uh, configuration based on, uh, uh, we have several environments, right? We have a production environment and a test environment. Uh, for the configurations would differ based on environment. So to pull the configurations of an environment, we have a config service. And to deploy artifacts, we have an automated process, process from Jenkins. So, sorry to cut the questions short, but if you have more questions, uh, I'm sure Navita will be around and you can talk to her one-on-one -on -one, uh, with your questions. Thank you. <laughs>